I want to talk about apocalyptic fiction or my favorite apocalyptic fiction novels. So I know that it would seem like common sense why I read apocalyptic fiction right now when we're all dealing with the fear and anxiety of the coronavirus. My thoughts, and it could go either way, it could go like, yes, you should not read apocalyptic fiction right now. If it's going to make you more anxious, don't read it. Personally, I find that reading apocalyptic fiction can almost be helpful because it's like, well, at least, at least we're not in this situation and hey, they survived this situation and well, if we get overrun by zombies, at least we'll have this drama to look forward to. Stuff like that. So, basically it's like, I read apocalyptic fiction in these times to be like, well, at least we're not there yet. Um, but yeah, it's totally valid if, if reading apocalyptic fiction will make you anxious right now. And if it's going to do that, just don't watch this video. Don't read the books I'm going to recommend. Totally fine. So I have a bunch of books in front of me that are apocalyptic fiction. There also is a mix of like science fiction and dystopia, but I'm just counting it as apocaly apocalyptic fiction. Um... Yeah, and these aren't in any particular order. They're just here in front of me. I'm going to pick them in a random order. The next book is The Last by Hannah Jameson. This was sent to me by Atria Books. I always describe this in my head as The Shining Meets Lord of the Flies. So basically, it's about these group of writers. I think it's a group of writers. Is it a group of writers? I read this a long time ago. These group of people who are at a hotel, um, the main character, I'm really stupid, John, it, wait, no, he's a historian, he's not a writer, the main character, John, um, and all the other people at the, ho uh, the hotel. So, they're at the hotel when a nuclear, is it a nuclear, I am so dumb, nuclear attack on Washington, D.C. happens, and basically wipes out Washington, D.C., and... As after that, it's like basically like nuclear, nuclear apocalypse, um, and all communication is lost. So John, along with 20 other survivors, just have to figure out how to survive. And there is a murderer who's killing people, um, right? I read this a year ago, and I don't really remember what happened. Basically, yeah, there's murders, there's suicides, um... And people are dying, and now they have to survive. And it goes into, like, how the end of the world affects people's psyche, how to deal with the end of the world, stuff like that. Um, I really like the synopsis for this one, so I'll just read it. Story and John Keller is on a work trip in Switzerland when the world ends. Now, he desperately wishes he hadn't ignored the last message from his wife, Nadia. I miss you so much. I feel bad about how we left it. Love you. The one he was considering how to answer when he received a string of hor horrifying push notifications. Breaking. Nuclear attack on Washington in progress. Story developing. Breaking. 200,000 fa fatalities. Estimated. Says experts. Breaking. Concur confirmed. President and staff among dead in nuclear explosion. Awaiting more information. Two months later, the 20 survivors remain in the hotel not going to try to pronounce that, an infamous establishment with a dark and mysterious legacy. Far away from the nearest city, this motley crew fights to keep hope alive and maintain some semblance of civilization, but when Keller goes up on the roof to investigate he and the hotel's worsening water quality, he is shocked to find the body of a young girl floating in one of the tanks, and is faced with the terrifying possibility that there might be a killer among the group. As supplies dwindle and tensions rise, John becomes obsessed with investigating the death of the little girl as a way to cling to his own humanity. Yet the question remains, can he afford to lose his mind in this hotel, or should he take his chances in the outside world? Yeah, basically, murder, shining, Lord of the Flies, nuclear attack, it's really good, even though I don't really remember most of it. This next one... Is Recursion by Blake Crouch. This was sent to me by Crown, which is an imprint of Penguin Random House. This 
is mostly science fiction. There were some apocalyptic chunks, but this book, this book, oh my goodness, this book, I'm not joking when I say that it made me look at reality in a whole new light. Like, oh my goodness. So basically, bl uh, not Blake Crouch, Recursion is about this technology which is invented so that people can go back in time and change time. The problem is anyone, like let's, let, let me put it this way. Imagine that I go through a day and I remember eating eggs for breakfast, but then someone goes back in time and changes it so that I didn't have anything for breakfast. In the present, I would still kind of remember having eggs for breakfast and I would have then two realities. And so when people start changing time, everyone else starts remembering two realities and so it drives people to insanity and so there's mass suicides and the inventor has to f decide. It's, again, not good at giving synopses, but basically it's a sci-fi thriller about time travel and bad things that happen because of time travel and bad people trying to use time travel to do bad things and good people trying to save the world and it's just really good. Um, this book is, like, it'll mess your, you up. It's like, again, it made me view reality in a whole different way. So if that's going to make you anxious, don't read this book. <laughs> the next book I have is Immunity, also Contagion, which I don't own a copy, but Contagion and Immunity. This is a duology by Aaron Bauman, also Immunity was sent to me by Wonderkind PR, so thank you Wonderkind PR for that. Um, this is basically, this isn't apocalyptic, but it is science fiction, so I'm putting it in here anyway because it is such a good series, or duology. Basically, Contagion and Immunity are about this space crew who get an SOS message, um, and they have to go find the SOS message to save this other crew that sent the SOS message. When they get there, there's no one there, and it's basically, like, a zombie horror story. It was so good, so terrifying. I still remember being under my blanket with my flashlight, reading it, and being scared out of my mind. I highly recommend this series. Next book I have is... Emily Eternal by M.G. Wheaton. I, th yeah, I believe, yeah, mm hmm hold on. I got this copy signed. It makes me so happy. Um, Emily Eternal is about this AI named Emily who is trying to save the world, but she can't because the sun is basically about to explode and she's trying to find a way to save humanity. And during this, her, the campus that she lives on, the college campus that she, like, resides in, because she's digital, is invaded by a bunch of, is it, someone, some bad people. Um, and she's, like, shut down temporarily, but then she wakes up again and she's in a different spot. Basically, she, like, joins, ba or bands together with this other guy and girl and they have to save the world and all sorts of fun things. Yes, this is apocalyptic, and it is science fiction, but honestly, it's also a little bit of humor. There were multiple scenes that made me laugh, a lot of scenes that made me smile. So, it was, and it, and it didn't mess with, like, the vibe of the book either. Like, I was worried, well, how wouldn't humor, like, make this book feel weird, but it didn't. It really blended, Luna, it really blended with the book well. The next book I have is The Warehouse by Rob Hart. This is also not very apocalyptic. It's more dystopian, alternate future science fiction. This is basically about this woman and it's the per it has two perspectives, I believe. It's a woman and a man. They're basically working in this place. Is it Cloud? I believe it's called Cloud. Yeah, it's Cloud. Basically a fictional version of Amazon and they're trying to figure out they start discovering little things, and they're like, oh, that's weird, oh, that's suspicious, and they're, like, undermining the company. It's very good. It's very unsettling. That was the word I used every time I thought about this book. A lot of scenes, it, was not, it wasn't, like, straight-up scary, but it was like, that's really weird. That's unsettling. So I highly recommend this one, and this one isn't too scary as far as, like, apocalypse stuff. The final book I have is nonfiction. Fun. This is like 
this was published this year, I believe. Um, but this is about events that happened a, a little while back. Yeah, this is published in 2019. This is Crisis in the Red Zone by Richard Preston. He also wrote The Hot Zone, which is, I believe, a movie now on National Geographic. Um, this is about the Ebola outbreak, and this book, this nonfiction book, was scarier than some of the fiction books I've read, which is scary on its own. Um, yeah, so I can see this one making a lot of people anxious. So if you can't, if you have trouble dealing with um, reading about sickness, reading about symptoms, if you have hypochondria or OCD or anxiety, don't recommend this one. It's very, it's very gory, it's very detailed, and it's very upsetting. But if you can handle it, I really recommend this one. It is a very fascinating read. And that is all the apocalyptic fiction and one semi-apocalyptic nonfiction that I have for you. Let me know if you've read any of these or if you plan to read them and what your thoughts are in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. One more thing before I go. So my friend Miranda Reeves and I have started a book club called The Plot Thickens Book Club. And our first month is going to be April. And the book we chose for that month is... Conceal, Don't Feel by Jen Kalanita. We will be starting this book on April 1st and discussing it on the Goodreads group page. I will leave the link to the Goodreads group page and the Instagram in the description below. Thanks!